You know, I knew that what I was reliving under hypnosis was absolutely real and that I was accessing the truth of what occurred to me that day. My car did roll to, the stop, to a stop at, right at the feet of this man who had stepped out into my lane of traffic and he put up his hand as if to stop my car. And I looked at him and he was looking at me through the windshield and I couldn't make out his face. And so I looked at the other guys over there and I noticed they were all dressed alike in the same real tight coveralls and I couldn't see their faces. There were two guys there and then the other guy back there were the wands, but they were, come, they were starting to walk toward the car. And then I hear the guy standing right in front of me say, Sherry, we've been waiting for you. And I was just terrified. And I reached over and locked the passenger door and I locked my door. I put my hands on the, on the steering wheel and I locked my hand, arms across like that and I put my head down. And he scolded me and he said, look at me. Sherry, look at me. You know if you look at me, it's all better. Just look at me. Why do you do this to yourself? And I was just shaking. I remember I was shaking, just really shaking. And I was 17. I was pretty sure that, sure that I was going to have a heart attack. I was pretty sure that my heart was going to explode. I was terrified. I feel something brush against my arms, and I open my eyes to see this grayish tan, claw-like and reach across and wrap its fingers, three fingers and a kind of a thumb around my forearm. And another one over here. And they pull me out of the car. And the second that they touched me, I became calm. So I just, there I was, I was standing by the side of the road by my car. On each side of me there were these little guys. And I'm looking at the, the main guy. He's definitely the main guy. The other three are, they seem shorter or smaller or more diminished, but there's definitely a leader, and that's the guy I'm looking at. And he looks kind of like that. It's hard to find a friendly face of an ET on the internet. This is the best I could do. He's not quite that blue, but that's what my guy looks like. And I do refer to him as my guy. They're my guys. Um, <clears throat> And I was right. If I could have just gotten a look at his face, I would remember what happened to me that day, but I was really blocked. Really blocked. So he says, we have work to do. And he starts to walk away, and they lead me across the field to the ship. I see the ship, and always when I see a ship, and I've seen lots of them, when I see them, people say, why don't you take a picture? But it's not like that. You don't think like that. You just, to me, when I see the ships, I just, I, I go into a different zone. I am in a different zone. They're bringing their vibration down and they're taking mine up. I see the ship and don't even think about taking a picture. I just feel nothing but, I feel just nothing but love in all honesty. So when I saw that ship over there, I just wanted to just look at it. But you know, I didn't want to go toward it. I didn't want to go there. I knew what was going to be happening. I wasn't looking forward to it. 